quiet. <laughs> All right, we have a couple of people joining. We're just going to wait another minute to see who else will join. Hello, everyone. Wyatt, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, sweet boy. <laughs> All right, it's about one o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started with our live at lunchtime today. Yes. Welcome. Welcome, everyone, for joining us. The sun is out. It's only a little bit muddy. Yep, yeah. and we're not stuck in the barn today. And we're not, <laughs> no. <laughs> Which is not a bad thing. We no. love our barn. Friends. But we like to get out. We have such a big sanctuary. We want to show it off and show off our residence, of course. Today we are with Wyatt. And back here is Jasmine. <laughs> Hi, Jazzy. <laughs> so we are hanging with them today. Yes, we are on this gorgeous, gorgeous Wednesday afternoon. Mm -hmm. So we thought we would cover something that may, maybe many of you know, but mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know and can even be confusing <laughs> with people in the equine realm. Yes. So what is exactly a draft horse? versus a light horse. There's so many different types of horses out there, not just breeds. That's right. And that's mm -hmm. what we're going to get into. Exactly. So, as you can <laughs> see, we happen to be in a pasture where we have two horses together. Mm -hmm. One happens to be a draft horse. Can you guess which one? Not a giraffe. A giraffe. Draft. Draft. Some, <laughs> some kid came up to me and said, he said, did you say giraffe? I said, no. <laughs> well, they are big they and are tall, big. but yes. <laughs> yes, so draft horse versus light horse. Yes, can you guess which one is a draft horse and which one is a light horse? <laughs> She's like, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> so Wyatt here is a draft. That's right. You can tell by, we're going to explain in a little bit more detail the differences, but just right off the bat, you can tell because he is larger and then his build is a little bit larger, stockier, different than Jasmine, whose build is considered a light That's horse. Right. Now, some people would consider Jasmine to be a medium build, mm -hmm. but others would consider her a light horse. So we thought these two would be a perfect example because you can clearly see the difference here. Now, we'll talk about Mr. here. Wyatt definitely <laughs> wants to say, yep, look at me, look at me. <laughs> we'll talk about Mr. here, yes. First, he is our six-year-old Shire. His yes. breed is a Shire. He's a Shire horse. Now, if you glance down at his four beautiful feet, he has feathers, though the hair around his, um, his hoof, that's called feathering, and it's, um, you know, his breed is known for having feathers around their feet, so that's what he has. And that makes him very unique and special, doesn't it, mister? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Yes. Not that you're not unique and special to begin with. <laughs> yeah. So he's our six-year-old. He was the youngest horse we had here, or equine here. No longer. He's no. no longer the youngest equine. Emma trumps him because she's only two, yes. right? What you I find graduated. so interesting is, so yes, his birthday's in April, so he'll be six this year, this spring. Actually, I think he'll be seven this spring. Think. Is it six? No, he'll turn six. Oh. Yeah, so he'll be six years old. And uh, the interesting thing about Shires, and of course we're going to get more into it, is that but they can continue to grow between five and eight years old. Yep. So, so he why could it could bigger. So, so why it could grow still in the next couple of years. Very interesting. Absolutely. <laughs> and that being said, Shire is known for being one of the largest yes. draft beads, breeds and tallest. Now, that being said, there are, every horse is built unique and different, so that's, you know, typically what it is. Right, buddy? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Isn't he handsome? There, we have Miss Beautiful over here, who's very sleepy. She just yawned. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Handsome. Oh, there's that yawn. Big yawn. Oh, so tired. You need an afternoon nap here after this. <laughs> <laughs> a horse never yawns just once. Just mm -hmm. like us, usually. Always a few times. It's always a few times, right? Do you have any more in there? And let us know if you suddenly had the urge out there to yawn. <laughs> Do you have any more handsome? 
So we'll talk more about Jasmine in a few minutes. Yes. But uh, let's talk about Wyatt first. So he's a six-year-old, like I said, are you gonna yawn again? How are you? <laughs> so he's our six-year-old Shire. Uh, he was rescued from the Amish. And I don't know if, when, what exactly he was bred for, but mm -hmm. probably to be a workhorse. Yep, yeah, he was out in, out in Pennsylvania. Yep. But when we acquired him, he was ne severely neglected. Yes. Uh, he had vitamin deficiencies. He had some other things going on, which shows that the, he did not get the proper care. Mm -hmm. um, so thankfully, we acquired him, and now he lives his life here at the sanctuary in a place of safety and love where he is just doted on. And he is, I would say, the sanctuary greeter. Every person that comes to the sanctuary <laughs> knows who Wyatt is. Oh, my gosh. If sure. you've ever been here, you know him because if he hears someone approaching or sees anyone anyone approaching uh us here the staff or on our open days any visitors he you'll hear a clump because he is running right up to the fence line to see if you've got treats or mm -hmm. just some love to give him and everybody had love to give him yes and so he loves he, the he, attention he, he's, you could tell he's he's a, he's a baby he's a oh, child oh yeah he's very playful yes he <laughs> is right yeah and you're very smart mm -hmm. yes you are very smart and he loves the attention. Don't oh, let him absolutely. fool you. He loves it. Yes, he loves do. it. So let's talk a little bit more about draft horses and light horses and the differences between them. Hi, beauty. Yeah. So obviously some major differences is the build, right? Draft horses have a bigger build. Mm -hmm. Light horses obviously have a, I'm sorry, is my paper scaring you? Do you want to smell it? <laughs> um, light horses have a lighter build. So draft horses many times are bred for uh, pulling or carriage work things mm -hmm. like that and light horses are mainly built for their or uh, bred for their agility and things like that although it can be interchangeable even though draft horses are not uh, typically bred for riding and things like that they can do all those things too mm -hmm. They're very versatile aren't you yes. yes so okay so bigger builds Shire is one of them uh, Clydesdale Belgians, Percherons are just a few of the more popular ones. There are many more. <laughs> um, and with, they all have a tall stature, as you can see. He's very tall, and oh, thank yes. you, he makes me look smaller Let's than see. I am. Yeah, I know, stand right next to him. <laughs> right? Yeah, you make me look smaller. And heavy muscle build and large body size. Um, Shires okay, works first. Show off his body size. Can you <laughs> Shires oh, were. Go. Oh, he's gonna just follow you. <laughs> Shires were first bred in the UK. Some Shires can reach about. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Nineteen <laughs> hands. Now that's just at the withers. That's not including the head and neck. Mm -hmm. Baby girl, I know. Yeah. Hi, honey. Um. So let's see. They can weigh. Can you take a guess? Oh my gosh, a lot of yes. <laughs> they can weigh up to 2,200 pounds. Ooh, okay, wow. you don't want them stepping on your foot. That Absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. That's why when he just came up behind me, I am watching my back. That's right. <laughs> um, so, let's see. Uh, the clear difference between American and English. There are some differences between American Shires and English Shires. Mm -hmm. um, so they were brought over here, and the American Shire has only existed for about... Uh, a little more than 100 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So in order from biggest to smallest draft horses, we have Shire, which is Wyatt, Clydesdale, Belgians are known to be the strongest uh -huh. breed, Percherons, which is what Sheena is. Mm -hmm. Shires are known for being docile, calm, patient, loving, easy to train, and friendly, as you can see. Very friendly. <laughs> You've got that down. <laughs> He's like, how about more treats, please? So, just look at his legs and move. I know. He's gorgeous to watch him move. So, as you can imagine, draft horses are known for being friendlier, mm -hmm. calmer. And, um, you know, of course, every horse is different and has their own personality. Mm -hmm. Now, he is young, yes. so he has a lot of energy. Yes. But he is very loving and very docile. Now, can you imagine if these breeds were not known for being that way? That would be very Ooh, difficult to work with because size. of their size. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah, of course. They typically have, so draft horses typically have broad shoulders. Do you have broad shoulders? Mm -hmm. I'd say so. A large chest. Oh, yes. You see that right mm -hmm. there? Big muscles that make them suited for pulling and carrying. Although we don't like that, do we? No. no. You don't do that here. Um, let's see. We, because of their body type size, is irrelevant. And when classifying draft horses, um, 
it just depends on mainly their build when they're classified. Mm -hmm. So size is irrelevant, right? Yeah. What are you guys doing? Huh? Uh, like larger breeds, unfortunately, larger horses can also have, you know, some issues that are typical to larger breed, just like larger breed dogs have some specific. joint issues. Yes. Mm -hmm. Larger horses can have some joint issues. They tend to age faster. They can develop lameness with age. So it's something that we watch for. Absolutely. Um, it can have more arthritic issues in the fetlock, which is back there mm -hmm. towards the ankle. Um, so we always watch for that in the pastern. Um, so draft horses are huge animals who can measure six to seven feet tall at the withers. If you didn't know what hands were, mm -hmm. it's four, every hand is four inches so measured from the bottom of the hoof to the withers. Okay. So I'm 19 six. hands times four inches. <laughs> That's how many inches. Yeah. yeah. So. This is where I. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big boy. Yes, you are. I know you want this. He's being actually, he's being very gentle. Being very gentle. Come. See a little docile. I'll give you a little bit. A little. Okay. Watch these big lips try to get this little tiny bit. Good boy. Aww. Good boy. So they have strong, well-developed muscles, heavy frames, and short backs. Their necks are either straight or have a convex curve. And in many breeds of draft horses, they have feathering along their hooves, mm -hmm. which he does. Now, let me use some terms that you might not be so familiar with. What does it mean when a horse is de deemed either cold-blooded, warm-blooded, or hot-blooded? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard these terms before, but they are floated around in the equine industry quite a bit. Um, and they do have a meaning. Now, obviously, all equines are warm-blooded. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean... Um, that they're not in the terms that we know what warm blooded and cold blooded is, but it more refers to their temperament. Oh, yes. interesting. So draft horses, like I said, are, are known for being typically more calm, not as easily, um, distracted or disturbed. They have more of a calm temperament. So they're considered to be cold blooded. Okay. And then we have hot bloods, which are typically the thoroughbreds, the Arabians, um, why? Not because they're mean, just because they tend to be more excitable. Mm -hmm. um, they can get more easily agitated or easily scared, and they're known for just, you know, having a ton of energy and maybe a little bit more nervous. Yeah, you're not like that, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what that means. It, it's more um, used to describe temperament of the horse, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. which can be confusing. So, yes, I said horses are, of course, warm-blooded animals. Um, but it's helpful to know these terms because <laughs> it helps you to know how to handle them and how they are typically, right? Absolutely. Um, so even it, though it is a general loose term used to describe certain breeds of horses, it does not mean that each horse doesn't have their own unique challenges, right. personality, things like that. Um, so draft horses are considered to be cold-blooded. Cold-blooded is an informal term. They tend to have calmer temperaments. Many light horses are hot bloods. Hot blood is informal, meaning they tend to be a bit more nervous and energetic, like we mentioned, like mm -hmm. thoroughbreds and Arabians. Now, are there warm blooded horses? What do you think? I would imagine. Yes, there are. So there's always yeah. an in between, right? So let's go over the light horses, then we'll talk about the warm bloods. Yeah, we'll move over here to Jasmine. Yeah. Hi, Jazzy. Okay. So these horses would have a smaller build, like Jasmine. Whoop. They are not naturally <laughs> as tall as draft horses, although they can be quite tall. But remember, when you're classifying draft versus light, you're looking at the build of the horse. Um, so the height ranges from 14 to 17 hands tall. The average weight hits the 1,000 to 1,300 pound range. Light horses are considered as riding horses more often than draft horses. Mm -hmm. um, they're generally more versatile and are capable of more action and greater speed than draft horses. And that seems to make sense when you think about it, right? Because all that weight you guys carry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we're being very, very calm, especially with Jasmine, because she's much more shy than Wyatt is, as you can probably see already. Yes. <laughs> and actually that could be, you know, it is because of her background, but mm -hmm. also because she's a light horse and she is more excitable mm -hmm. than this guy over here, <laughs> which makes them a perfect couple. Right? Yeah. Balance each other out. They do. Uh, so, let's see. Hi. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi. What else did I want to cover in my nose? you want to read with me? <laughs> hmm? 
So medium built horse breeds. Yes, there are. And does this mean that they are warm bloods? What do you guys think? Hi. It definitely means that they're warm bloods. The medium builds are considered warm bloods. Breeding the large heavy horses with lighter, faster, and more fiery tempered hot bloods created horse breeds that combine the quickness and agility of hot bloods with the larger build and mild temperament of cold bloods. Over time, draft horses were increasingly bred. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> uh, with hot blooded imports, creating the forerunners of dozens of breeds in existence today. Warm bloods have. Jasmine, where'd you go? Back here. <laughs> Jasmine, come here, baby. Here, I'm gonna get closer I'll to Jazzy. Scratch Wyatt for a bit. <laughs> come here, Jazzy. Well, I said that, and then. Yeah. Do you have any more cookies in your pocket? I have some more. Yes. Let me see if I can. You can't have all the cookies, you know. You have to share. So let's see if I can get a closer look at Miss uh, Jasmine over Wyatt, here. Wyatt, come here. Jazzy, come here, honey. Wyatt, come here. No, you stay. <laughs> you stay. Go see Alex. She loves to. Yes. Go see Alex. Jazzy, come here, babe. <laughs> That's my good girl. That's my good girl. Come here. You don't want any more? No? I'll let you think about it. You can think about it. Okay, so um, so they tend to have smaller heads, as you can see. She has a much smaller head than Wyatt and smaller body than draft horses, and they tend to be less excitable and uh, than hot-blooded horses, but still more excitable than the cold-blooded horses. That's my good girl. So, introducing the Cleveland Bay over here. Jasmine is a Cleveland Bay. She's about 19 years old. Cleveland Bay is known to be a warm-blooded breed of horse. They are classified as, as warm bloods because they are too heavy and built to be considered a hot-blooded horse, but they're too light and athletic to be considered a cold-blooded horse. Although some would consider Cleveland Bays to be lighter. So introducing Jasmine, she's a Cleveland Bay, and unfortunately, due to breeding, um, there are not many Cleveland Bays left. There are approximately, <laughs> hi handsome, 1,000. as long as I could. <laughs> okay. Hey, mister, come here. Come here. Good boy. But it is great because you can definitely see the differences between the two of them right Oh, here. definitely, <laughs> definitely. So <laughs> there are only approximately about 1,000 Cleveland Bay horses alive today, and with about 180 of them left in North America. Hi, sweetheart. Jasmine says, I think I'm done. Yeah. I'm done with my debut. <laughs> uh, so there was a significant decrease in population of the Cleveland Bay horses um, after World War I, as they were used to haul artillery. Um, and they de continued to decline in population to, during the 1920s and 1930s as transport increased. And originally they were bred in England mm -hmm. and named for that region to be carriage horses. So the Cleveland Bay is built stocky. I don't know if you can see, she's not skinny by any means, right? Mm -hmm. So she's, she's a little bit stocky, but definitely not as stocky as a draft breed but her features are also proportionate. So they have the build comparable to that of many warm-blooded breeds in a sense that they are heavy, but still athletic and agile. Now, Cleveland Bays can be no other color except they. They can only be that color. Uh, breeders, wanted, breeders wanted a light draft horse of great strength, stamina, movement, hardiness. They are known for having an easygoing temperament. And I would say Jasmine is shy, but she has a very easygoing temperament. Oh, very much so. Hi, honey. I know. I know you want more cookies. So can you spot any more differences between these two horses? I love them. Yes, I know. Well, we've covered muscle build, mm -hmm. the chest, the different parts of the body. So like the chest and the legs. Mm -hmm. The height. The height, yep. That's pretty much it, besides the temperament mm -hmm. and the um, agility. Poor Jasmine, she looks a little sleepy. She is. Are you sleepy, girl? Are you sleepy? Are we disturbing your nap time? 
we might be. <laughs> Wyatt's like, but I want to play. <laughs> yes, Mr. Wyatt always wants to play. Yes, you want to. You want to show everybody your handsome, Betty, handsome Porla? If anybody has any questions, whether that's related to draft and light horses or about Wyatt and Jasmine, let us know. Look at that beautiful, beautiful face. Oh, he's so pretty. pretty gorgeous. Like, he's just so he's handsome. So gorgeous, yes. <laughs> You're so gorgeous. Your head is the size of half of my body. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Yeah. You're a good boy. And Jasmine's a good girl. Now, let's tell you a little bit more about Jasmine and her background. Hey, mm -hmm. Jazzy. So Jasmine, oh, she was a part of a 46 horse rescue. Oh, yes. Hair rescue from a PMU factory in Canada. Mm-hmm. Now, she, thankfully, um, was not a PMU mare. However, she was born there from a PMU mare. That was her dam. And uh, unfortunately, with these PMU foals, so she was a foal when she was rescued. Mm -hmm. But the foals really do not get treated very well. No. So she does have some painful past memories, I think. Yeah. Um, when she got here, she was severely, severely um, skinny and neglected. Yes. And uh, just not taken care of at all. She probably didn't know a lot of love, did yeah. you? She's no. had one of the most um, dramatic transformations here um, at the sanctuary when it comes to the rescues that we bring in from when she was rescued to now, to what she looks like now. And even her behavior, obviously, you can tell she can still be a little shy, yep. which is probably, you know, horses have very good memories. They do. So she could be holding on to that traumatic past, but, you know, you can just, it's such a difference if you were to see photos from when she was rescued and then when she first came here um, to the sanctuary, it, what a transformation. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And she knows nothing but love here, Absolutely. which is wonderful. And that's the beauty. <laughs> that is the beauty of equine advocates and the horses that we have here and the equines we have here, because they know nothing but love right. and care here from everyone that is involved. Mm -hmm. Hi, honey. Hi. Yes. So that's a little bit about these two. We know now what a draft horse is. We know now what a light horse is or medium build. Mm -hmm. We know that drafts are known to be cold blooded. And light horses and medium horses are warm-blooded or hot-blooded. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have anything to do with their blood. It has to no. do with the fact that they, <laughs> of their temperament. Yes. <laughs> and that's not to say that you can't meet a cold-blooded horse. Right. That maybe is a little bit more excitable. Mm -hmm. Just like people, we always say, know your horse. Know your horse. <laughs> and they are just like humans, just like we do. Just like, They're just <laughs> like us. Just in fur form. Yes. And so maybe next time you're at this sanctuary or maybe um, another farmer sanctuary where you see horses, even if you don't know the specific breed like Shire versus other breeds, maybe you'll be able to pinpoint just looking at their build, is it a light horse? Is it a draft horse? Just that um, category. And you'll be able to tell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Honey. Aren't they both gorgeous? Jasmine is so beautiful also. Mm -hmm. Just her beautiful long mane and her long forelock. I was gonna say, I know she's a little skittish. I don't know if we can get a little close up here because for anyone that might be looking at, has been looking at her mane and sees this, we'll see if we can. Um, but it looks like her mane is braided. Yes. So if we can get a close up before the end of this live, or if you come to the sanctuary and see it for yourself, it looks like it's braided. We didn't do that. Yeah. That's called a fairy knot. That's right. <laughs> that was just moving around the wind and everything, creating the knots. Or if you believe in the folklore, Michelle, yeah. what is it? <laughs> so fairies, fairy knots happen when mm -hmm. fairies come down at night when we're all yes. asleep. And they ride, if they choose which horses to ride. So mm -hmm. Jasmine must be very popular yes. with these fairies. <laughs> so they, <laughs> they say that they ferrets, the fairies leave the knots in purposely so mm -hmm. that when they come back the next night, they don't have to take time to twist them so yes. that they can ride them. <laughs> <laughs> so Jasmine here, I think that might be why she's so tired. I think that because maybe the fairies, the fairies came by and nine? just rode her all <laughs> over the place and uh, now she's exhausted. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? Is that what happened? She's like, I'm not so sure about that tale. I don't know. <laughs> I just think it's so pretty. <laughs> yeah, she, they're both 
just amazing horses. Um, I love all the horses and equines here, but I love these two. They're so, so fun. So much fun, right? And look at the eyelashes on this one. I don't know if you guys can see Mr. Wyatt's eyelashes, but they're long and luscious. <laughs> Why did the boys get the long and luscious yeah. eyelashes? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good boy. Good girl. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, we hope you learned something new today about uh, different categories of horses Absolutely. and some of the differences that you can spot just looking at them and also if you're watching them interact with each other and just their behavior. That's right. All right. Well, until next time and the next time you come visit the sanctuary, come visit these two yes. because they're a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.